In the third lesson of our Quick Start tutorial for V-Ray for SketchUp, we will cover lighting interiors in two parts using V-Ray Next. This will build on concepts from our previous video, which explored exterior lighting, so we would recommend watching that one first if you haven't already. For part two of this lesson, let's return to the settings in the Asset Editor so we can prepare our project for nighttime lighting. I'm going to switch back on the interactive render toggle and switch the denoiser back to the NVIDIA AI denoiser so we can get quick interactive feedback while making changes. I'm also going to return the exposure value to 9 and lower the resolution back to 640 by 800 pixels. Let's also re-enable the material override so we can focus on the lighting in our render. Now, let's start an interactive render. All right, to start things off, let's head to the Lights tab in the Asset Editor and turn off the sun by clicking on the little sun icon next to the sunlight. Now, let's set up the lighting in the project for a nighttime scenario. In the Dome Lights settings, I'm going to disable the texture and then set the color to a nice dark bluish color instead. Now, things are a bit too dark. So an easy way to bring more light into the interior would be to increase the strength of the dome light. Something around 5 looks good to me, but you'll see now that the exterior is too bright for night lighting. To fix this, head to the options in the dome light and let's check the invisible option. Now we'll be able to see the color coming from the background slot in the environment settings. You'll see here that it is already set to a dark bluish color, which fits a night setting. Okay, let's head to the lights tab so we can simulate light shining in from the moon to bring a little more moodiness into our picture. I'm going to re-enable the sun, which we can use for moonlight. Once again, let's change the color to a purplish blue, this time a bit lighter shade. Then, let's switch the color mode from filter to override. This will set the color of the V-Ray sun to match the color in the filter color parameter. Also, the intensity is still too overwhelming, so let's lower it down a bit. A value of 0.25 will work fine for our image. All right, that's looking much better. But to really put together the finishing touch, let's soften the shadows by increasing the sun size multiplier to 10. Okay, great. Let's stop the interactive render and close the VFB. Now that we have set the overall feel of the environment, we can move on to setting up some artificial lights in the interior. To start, let's head over to the kitchen area and open up the spotlights component by double clicking on the light a couple of times. For this project, I'd like to use IES lighting, which will give me additional control and flexibility over the light cone's shape and fall off to suit my image. Note that adding a light to a component in SketchUp will add that light to all copies of that component making it easy to quickly add lights to all of our kitchen spotlight component fixtures. Now that I've got the spotlight selected, in the V-Ray light toolbar, let's click on the IES light, and then we'll be prompted to load in an IES file. You'll find one provided in the project files called 23.IES. Then, all we need to do is place the light in the general area where the bulb should sit in this spotlight fixture. And just like that, the IES light appears on all of the spotlight components in the kitchen. Now, this will give us a very nice and realistic lighting result in our kitchen area. Okay, I'm going to click on the Select tool in SketchUp's toolbar to deselect the spotlight component, and then let's click on Render Camera to return to our scene. Note that in the same manner as our kitchen lights, we have a disk light already placed in the cone of the standing lamp on the right of the lounge area, as well as a larger fill light behind the camera but these are both turned off at the moment. All right, let's go ahead and start an interactive render to see how the new kitchen lights affect our image. To speed things up, I'm also going to draw a render region around the kitchen area where the lights are in the render. Right now, there isn't much light coming from the kitchen, so let's select the IES light from the Asset Editor and adjust its properties to brighten things up a bit. Typically, IES files carry information about how its light cone spreads and its intensity which is why the intensity checkbox is not checked. If we check it on, we can then set a custom value in lumens for the IES light. Let's go with something around 15,000. Note that this value is too high for a real-world light bulb, but it works nicely here. 
This is more of an artistic choice, as I'm not so concerned with using real-world values as I am with creating a final result that I'm happy with. I'd also like to tweak the color a bit to make it warmer, so that things don't look so cold in the image. As you can see, a little color can go a long way, but try not to overdo it. Even just a little bit of saturation is enough to warm up the atmosphere. Moving on, let's draw a render region around the center of our image and turn on the disk light called Standing Lamp Light to see its contribution to the lounge area in our image. Okay, it's a bit dim, so let's switch the units from default to radiant power for watts. This way, we can input real-world wattage values and have the option to follow a physically accurate workflow if we so desire. Let's lower the intensity a bit to 25. Great, now that it's bringing in enough light into our image, let's tweak it to better complement our interior. I'm going to set a warm tone for the color once again. And then adjust the directionality so that the light better corresponds to the standing lamp we're simulating. I'll use a value of 0.5, which makes the light a bit more focused and concentrated on the lounge area, similar to the IES lights in the kitchen. Okay, now let's turn off the render region. Alright. So far this looks good, but the image is a bit too dark. I can try to fix this by further increasing the intensity of the dome light or playing with the camera exposure, but I have another strategy in mind that works well here. As I mentioned earlier, I have already placed a large fill light in the project, which is sitting right behind the camera. Let's turn it on and see how it affects our image. I've given the fill light a very low intensity to contribute just a bit of light, and its color is set to match our environment. Note that this approach simply suits my stylistic preferences for lighting the image, rather than attempting to create the most realistic lighting results possible. Okay, I'm happy with how that looks. With the lighting set up now, let's head over to the settings and see how our image will look with a few final tweaks. First, let's turn off the material override so we're rendering with our final materials. Then, I'm going to drop down the effects rollout and increase the vignetting parameter to 1.3 to add a little darkness around the edges and corners of the image for a slightly moodier result. Okay, now let's stop the interactive render and prepare our settings for a final render. Let's switch off interactive rendering and make sure progressive is toggled off so that we're rendering with buckets. I'll also switch the denoiser to the default V-Ray denoiser since it gives us more accurate results and let's make sure that Auto Exposure and Auto White Balance are enabled. These were switched on when I disabled the interactive toggle, as I had enabled them for production rendering in advance. Let's also lower the exposure compensation down to negative 1, so that our image exposure is a bit darker for a nighttime render, similar to how we had it in our interactive preview. Lastly, let's increase the output resolution to 1280 by 1600. Alright, now we're ready to start our final production render. Feel free to do your own production render, or if you'd rather, you can load in the one provided with this video. Okay, now let's open the Color Corrections dialog, where we can tweak the colors a bit further to really make our image pop. You can feel free to play with the correction controls, just like we did in Part 1 of this lesson with the daytime render, but I'm going to do something different here. Just like we saved the color corrections we did for the previous image, we can load in color correction settings as well. To do that, click on Globals and select Load. I have prepared a preset in advance called Interior Night Render CC, which is located in the download files that you can use to load in global color corrections. You'll see right away that our color corrections bring out more darker colors, while creating a livelier sense of contrast, which makes the lighting and shadows more striking than before. Okay, I'm happy with how that looks, so let's close the color corrections, and lastly, open up the lens effects. Here, we can enable the bloom and glare effect, and play with the intensity and streak blur a bit. You'll see that the effect is mainly visible on the standing lamp in the lounge area, since we can directly see this light's source. Let's bring down the size parameter a bit as well, so that the overall effect is more subtle. Alright, once you're happy with your final result, don't forget to click on the disk icon to save your render. Okay, now you've seen a workflow for how you can set up interior lighting for both daytime and nighttime scenarios. 
using the powerful new tools available in V-Ray Next for SketchUp.